everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp, and today we're creating some beautiful floral cards against these sparkly backgrounds using the Tim Holtz Silver Sparkle cardstock and some alcohol pearl inks included in the May 2019 Simon Says Stamp card kit of the month. I'm going to start by applying some of the blending solution included in the May kit on the Silver Sparkle cardstock, and then I'm adding drops of the Sublime and Tranquil Alcohol Pearl inks all over my cardstock. I'm going to use this airbrush tool to blow the inks around while they're still wet. This is going to get them to kind of move a little bit and play together. I'm going to keep applying inks, blending solution, and using the airbrush tool until I get exactly the look that I want. I decided to do both of my backgrounds with only two ink colors and the blending solution. This first one, of course, is Sublime and Tranquil, and the next one will be Tranquil and Intrigue. I did a couple off camera and this was just what worked best for me and for kind of where I want to go with the rest of my project. To speed up the drying, I am using my heat tool to dry it faster. You can see as I'm adding heat, the sparkle starts to show through as those alcohol inks dry on the silver sparkle cardstock. This gives a beautiful, beautiful effect. And I'm really excited about this cardstock and the alcohol pearl inks and just look at the shimmer and the shine of this. So, so beautiful. There are many ways that you can use the alcohol inks and the sp silver sparkle cardstock to create lots of fun backgrounds. For my next background, I'm again going to take the blending solution and apply that to my cardstock first so that when I add the alcohol inks to the cardstock, they immediately start moving and playing with each other. The wonderful thing about the Intrigue and tw Tranquil alcohol pearl inks is that the blue and kind of purpley pink work together and they start to blend and kind of create this darker, deeper blue violet color as almost the third color in this combination. I'm using an alcohol ink paintbrush tool to move the inks a little bit more instead of the airbrush tool here. Just another way to get the inks to move and play. I felt like I lost quite a bit of the blue in the background so I did add a little bit more and then I have a little bit of blending solution on my glass mat that I'm picking up to help keep my paintbrush moving these inks. I did take the airbrush then and I start, I just kind of blew that all over to help move them around even more. And as it starts to dry, you can see where maybe you want to add additional color. I went in and added quite a bit more color here. Some of the drops were a little bit too circular and I wanted them to move a little bit more so I added a little additional blending solution and anywhere where I couldn't get the kind of definitive lines to smooth out I am grabbing some blending solution that I've put on my glass matte surface and I'm blending it out with that paintbrush just to soften those edges a little bit. I'm going to set this aside to dry or hit it with the heat tool. Next, I'm taking some Bristol Smooth cardstock and some of the floral and leaf images from the Delicate Flowers 6x8 clear stamp set included in the May kit. I am stamping these with the Ink on 3 Fade Out No Line Coloring ink and doing some of my favorite no line coloring technique with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I'm laying down some bright yellow, for, or pardon me, yellow first and blending out that yellow with pale yellow. These, these two colors are the main colors of this bloom. I thought the yellow flower would really pop against the blue and green background. 
to add more definition to the flower petals and also the center of my flower, I will be using bright yellow. This almost has an orangish tint to it. And at first I kind of thought I might have ruined my flower because it's so much darker. I use bright yellow and yellow together all the time. But again, I was really wanting to go with that pale yellow look for this bloom. But as I add a little bit more of this, I do think it helps give a little more definition to the each individual flower petal. And I was really glad that I added it. You'll see me add more of that near the end of the coloring. I added a little bit here at the beginning and then went back and added the rest. I also think that you have better results because I'm going in and adding kind of a feathering flicking technique that we do a lot with Copics, but I'm doing that with my zigs over the flower petals that I've already blended out. The trick is to make sure that the base layer of ink has already dried. These are water-based markers, so letting the flower petals dry and then going in and adding those texture marks with your marker, that kind of feathering technique, is going to help them not bleed out. If the paper is still wet, the inks are still wet, they'll kind of uh, blend out with the rest of that. But if you layer it on top of the dry ink, you'll keep that definition. I did skip over and start coloring in the leaves. I wanted to make sure that I colored all the leaves in and didn't accidentally color some of those yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and color these in with light green and yellow green. Again, I did go back and add some more light green over parts of these leaves, but I waited until the ink had pretty much dried after my first coloring so that it didn't bleed out into what I had blended. This is a fantastic color combination. It's one of my very favorites for anything green, and it works really well with our blue-green alcohol pearl ink background. We're gonna go back in and color in the rest of our flower petals. I like to lay down the dark color first and blend out with the light color. So again, our darker color for the petals is yellow, and we're blending out with pale yellow. To make sure you don't blend too much, you clean off the tip of your lighter, mar lighter marker color on a scrap piece of paper, or like I did, over to the side. That will ensure that the tips of our blooms are a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go in then and add that feathering technique that you can see a little bit better now that the camera is closer up. And that gives our flower petal so much texture. And finally, we'll take our bright yellow and add that definition to the edges of our flower petals. So used fairly sparingly and you can blend out anything that might be a little too harsh with your bright yellow marker. But this definitely adds some dimension and definition to our flower petals. These images will be fussy cut then, and I also added an additional leaf cluster that I am going to color with the same light green and yellow green markers, and then fussy cut that out. It's this stamp image here. After I fussy cut the flower, I realized I really felt like I wanted something else on my design. I've trimmed down my alcohol pearl inked background on that silver sparkle cardstock at a diagonal, split the design, and then I'm matting it on this white cardstock from the May kit. I'm going to mount each of these sections on foam tape. And I've also stamped a sentiment at an angle that's going to be in that white space between the two alcohol pearl ink panels. I stamped the phrase, so happy for you, from the Delicate Flowers 6x8 stamp set. We want to adhere our floral here, kind of to the left of our sentiment, and then we want to glue down our leaves. Because this was pretty delicate when I fussy cut it, one of the leaves fell off 
but luckily I can just glue that back together. We're going to start by gluing the flower cluster down in place and then we'll add the leaf to the top of that. And then I will eventually glue down the flower, little adhesive where it's touching the alcohol inked background. We'll trim off that little bit of the leaf tip and then glue this whole panel down onto a white top fold card base. My background is trimmed down to four inches by five and a quarter inches so that I have a nice white border all the way around. We're going to finish the design with a scattering of pretty pink posh white jewels. This adds just a little additional touch of sparkle to our card that adds to that silver sparkle showing through the pearl alcohol inked background. We'll add several of them up above and then a couple down below. These gems and jewels are going to finish my card design. I like to use the glue tube to glue them in place and the crystal katana to pick them up and put them exactly where I want them to go. This crystal katana works great so that you don't have to get your fingers in it mostly. You can see I accidentally bumped this one and so I had to go ahead and pick that one up, remove the glue and then pop it back in place. For my next background, the purple and blue or pinky purple and blue background that we created with our Intrigue and Tranquil alcohol pearl inks, we are going to stamp another bloom from the Delicate Flower 6x8 stamp set, again with that Ink on 3 fade out ink for no line coloring, and this time we're going to use Pale Violet and Violet for our flower petals. Anything with the darker ink is going to be created with the violet marker. We'll also be using a little bit of the bright yellow and yellow for the center of this flower. Just like we did for the yellow bloom, I want to add texture to each flower petal with that feathering technique, but I don't want to do that until the flower petals I've colored are completely dry. You get a lot more definition if you wait till it's all dry. So I'm going to go ahead and color these in and then we'll come back. Where they've already dried, I'm feathering in with pale or light violet first, pardon me, and then blending out just a little bit or extending that feathering motion with pale violet. Even over this, those are the same colors I used to color the flower petals, you still get that additional texture which I absolutely love. We'll add that color to our remaining petals, again laying down light violet first and blending out with pale violet. I try to follow the natural motion of each flower petal. So now I'm going in and trying to just kind of, I turn my paper because it helps me with that natural motion or how I want the feathering technique to look. Anything that might be a little harsh with that light violet marker, we can blend out with pale violet. For the center of the flower, I'm going to add a little bright yellow and blend out with my yellow marker. Once it's dry, I can go back in and add detail to the rest of the flower. So while that's drying, we'll go ahead and color in this other leaf cluster image with our light green and yellow green markers, just like we did before. I'm going to stamp this image twice so I have three leaf clusters to use with my flower bloom. And then I did add detail with the violet marker to the center of this flower. I fussy cut the flower and the leaves. I have cut the alcohol inked background at a diagonal like I did for the first card and stamped the you are so special to me sentiment in this one. I finished this card with the scattering of white gems as well. 
Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this set of cards featuring supplies from the May 2019 Simon Says Stamp Card Kit. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.